In this video, we're going to talk about the Bellman equation. But because this is a very specific topic, I want to show how this Bellman equation actually fits into the bigger picture of reinforcement learning. So let's start at the top. Reinforcement learning is learning what to do, that is how to map situations to actions, so as to maximize a numerical reward signal. This can be done in multiple ways, and so we can subcategorize reinforcement learning algorithms into two main parts. One are value-based methods, and the other is policy-based methods. Value-based methods will determine a value function that quantifies the reward. And using this value function, we determine an optimal policy. Policy-based methods will determine an optimal policy directly. And by optimal policy, it is the policy that maximizes the total reward. But wait, what is policy? So simply put, a policy is how does an agent behave in a given situation? Example of value-based methods includes Q-learning, deep Q networks, and SARSA, that is state action reward state action. Example of policy-based methods include reinforce, PPO, that is proximal policy optimization, or TRPO, that is trust region policy optimization. For this video though, we are interested in value-based methods as some of them make use of the Bellman equation. So value-based functions determine a value function, which in turn is used to determine a policy that will maximize total rewards. The value function is a function, so it has an input and some outputs. Depending on the inputs, there are two types of value functions. One of them is the state value function, represented by V, and then we have the state action value function, represented by Q. Wait, what are states and actions? A state is a snapshot of an environment that the agent is in, and an action is the decision taken by the agent in the environment. The state value function will take the state as input and output a real number. The state action value function will take the state and current action as an input and then output a real number. This real number is known as a Q value. The state value VFS will quantify how good is it to be in the state S. The state action value or Q value will quantify how good is it to be in the state S and take an action A. The equation of the state value looks like this, whereas the equation of the state action value looks like this. And as complex as they look, it's actually very intuitive. We'll now start explaining the intuition with a simple example and then come back to how we can write it as these mathematical formula. Let's say that we are in a fully observable environment where the agent is in its first grid and the goal is to get to this last grid. The last grid has a 10 reward and there's a poison space next to it that has a negative 10 reward. Other areas will have a reward of negative one. From the current state, let's say that we're in the first cell and the current state is S1. We can then perform the action to go right and end up in a state S2, or we can perform the action to go down and end up in a state S4. Now remember, we wanna perform the action that will give the maximum value because remember, we want to maximize total reward. The value of being in this first cell of state S1 is equal to the reward that is obtained when we transition to the state S1 plus the maximum future value. And this is represented in math right here. The maximum here will depend on the action that we take. This seems really simple, but in actually more real world and complex situations, performing an action in one state doesn't always mean we will end up in the next specific state. And this is stochasticity. So this means that if we are in state S1, just because we move right doesn't mean that we're gonna go to S2 for sure. There might be like a 20% chance we go to S2, a 30% chance we go to S3, a 10% chance we get to S4 and so on. But we can represent stochastic environments with probabilities. And so we compute expected values for these value functions. And so if we perform a specific action, it'll be the sum of probability of transitioning to a given state 
times the value of that next state. And in general, we can, instead of just saying write or down, we could just give it a generic action A. This is similar to the textbook equation with two main differences. The first is that the textbook has a gamma term. This gamma term is known as a discount factor and it will quantify how important are the current rewards obtained versus the future rewards that are obtained. And it will discount the future rewards because it's a number between zero and one. And the other difference is that we see that the reward R is added in between here. This is because in the textbook, they assume that the reward is also a function of the action taken. And so we need to put that into the equation altogether. But in our case, we're just assuming that it's a function of the state only and not the action. And so this can be written in a slightly different way. Now we can determine this value function, but how do we determine the next action to take? We can determine the next action to take depending on the action A that gave us the highest expected value overall. So that is the highest sum of products and value function. Now let's do the same for the state action values or Q values. For these Q values, we need to account for the state and the action taken in that state. So going back to our simple world, we are at state S1 and we apply an action of right. This means that we will end up in another state. For this simple world, like we mentioned before, it's pretty easy that we will end up in a state S2. And if we go down, we would have ended up in a state S4. The maximum reward in state S1 when going right is the reward in state S1 plus the maximum future reward in state S2. From the next state S2, we can perform any action. And hence, we would take a maximum across some action A dash, which is taken in the next state. And that's how we end up with this equation. But as we mentioned before, for the more complex case, making the action A1, which is right, doesn't necessarily mean we will end up in S2. And going down doesn't mean that we're gonna end up in S4 because this environment is stochastic and we can represent stochastic environments with probabilities and we compute expected values of these state action value functions. And the expected value is the sum of probability of transitioning to the state and the value of that state. And since this is a Q value, this would be the value of state and any future action that we take. But here we can see that the probability term doesn't depend on the future action A dash. So we can take it out. And once again, with the differences mentioned before, this becomes the original textbook equation. So to summarize this video, reinforcement learning algorithms can be subcategorized as value-based methods and policy-based methods. Value-based methods will determine a value function that quantifies the total reward. And using this value function, we can determine the optimal policy. The value function can be a state value function, that is V, or a state action value function, which is Q. The Bellman equation is a recursive strategy to calculate the value function. It is used by some value-based methods like Q-learning. Other value-based methods might use other techniques to determine these value functions. Well, that's all I have for this video, and I hope you understood the Bellman equation and where it fits into reinforcement learning. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you think I deserve it, please do consider subscribing. We've hit 100K, but we'd love to hit 150K, so please do subscribe if you think I deserve it, and thank you all so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.